Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have got a battery from InnerShare. It's a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. Okay, on opening the box, I see that there's like, uh, I mean, it's, it just shows the battery and there is styrofoam on each side. Let's see if these pull out. <sighs> No, nope. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just let it fall out of the box. And here we go. And at the bottom of the box, there is a small uh, user's manual. Okay, let's turn this around. Okay, let's see what we got. All right, this is different looking. Okay, right off the bat, you can see that it has built-in hard handles. So it makes it very easy to pick up and kind of maneuver, which is, which is kind of nice. I kind of like that. It also feels like it's a little bit uh, smaller in, in size. Uh, the handles do kind of protrude out a little bit. Uh, it also has the, the, the post bolts are already uh, attached to the terminals. Make sure that we can get those off nice and easy. Yeah, they come off nice and easy. They are M8 bolts and they are, uh, Looks like they're about 16 millimeters long, so that's good. All right, and it also has, uh, this battery also has some sort of connector right on the top here. So we'll be checking that out to see what that does. Okay, the front of the battery, it says from InnerShare, it's a, a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's a 12.8 volt, so a 12 volt battery, um, 100 amp hours, uh, deep cycle battery. And it also gives you, it also gives you the, uh, the total amount of watt hours right on the front of the battery, which is 1,280. Uh, we'll be testing that to make sure that that capacity is correct. And it does say right here, plus DC power station. So we'll be finding out what that does as well. Okay, the sides are nothing. The back has like this, uh, uh, like this ridged out design on the back. I'm not really sure why they chose to do that. So far, uh, I like the construction of this battery. It, it feels very well constructed, very solid, so I like that. Okay, just like with every other battery that you get, when you first get the battery, you always want to inspect it to make sure that there's no cracks or uh, anything's broken, anything, you know, nothing should sound loose inside. You shouldn't hear anything. Uh, it should feel like a solid block. And then the next thing you want to test for is you want to test the voltage at the terminals. Uh, you want to make sure that it comes to you between 13.1 and 13.2 volts. So let's go ahead and test that now. Okay, and our voltage is 13.13. So this battery is perfect right out of the box. Okay, and the next thing you want to do is uh, you want to make sure that you're getting what you paid for, which means that you need to charge this battery all the way up and then you need to perform some sort of capacity test to make sure that you're getting that 100 amp hours that you paid for. So we're gonna go ahead and charge this up all the way and then we'll start a capacity test. Okay, while this battery is charging, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit more about it. Like I said before, it's a 12.8, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, it has an IP rating of 65, so it's completely waterproof. The max charge and discharge for this battery is 100 amps. It states in the manual that the charge voltage is between 14 and 14.4. So that's kind of odd because I always, I always say that you want to charge your batteries between 14.4 and 14.6 or 14.8. Uh, so this one actually in the manual states it should be a little bit lower. And then it also says that it can be discharged all the way down to 10 volts before the BMS inside uh, shuts itself down to protect the cells from over discharge. Also in the manual, it states that it does have Bluetooth capabilities. So that means that you can connect to it via Bluetooth uh, from your phone. Uh, but nowhere in this small manual or anywhere else I can find either on the website or on their, uh, their Amazon page that where you can uh, find more information about this battery. Nowhere can I find a link or a name of the app that you're supposed to use. I've downloaded several BMS apps to try to connect to this and nothing works. So um, I'm gonna be contacting the company 
because they need to make that very easy to find. Nowadays, having a, uh, a Bluetooth capable battery is a big deal and you need to make sure that app is very accessible. The manual also states that this battery has a heating function and the heater will turn on when the battery gets down to zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit and then the heating function will turn off when the battery gets to five degrees Celsius which is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. The dimensions of this battery are 11.3 uh, inches in width, 7.1 inches deep, and it's 9.1 inches in height. It also says that the battery can be connected um, to support four in series and four in parallel. I, I look, when I first looked at it, I was thinking, uh, you know, how are you supposed to stack these? But you can see that the battery is shaped. So there's concaves at the bottom, which can support the handles at the top. So you can easily stack them up, which is kind of nice. And also I'm surprised that you can put them in series knowing that there is a heating function inside. So please leave it in the comments if you do have multiples of these batteries and you can connect them in series uh, and you don't have an issue with the heating function uh, messing with the voltages inside the battery. And like I said before, this battery actually is a, uh, it says plus DC power station. And uh, this, this battery is, uh, uh, what it actually comes with a DC controller box, like a DC power box. So let's go ahead and look at that now. And that's this right here. So let's open it up and here we go. It looks to be a very simple device. But you can see that it has the, uh, well, I, I believe this is, a, uh, this is an aviator plug. It looks like it has rubber washers in there. So I believe this uh, does, this is also waterproof as well. And as you can see with this control box, uh, it comes with two USB-A ports on one side. One of them is a five volt 2.4 amp port. And then the other one is a quick charge 18 watt port. And then on the other side, you have a USB-C port right here, which can handle five, nine, 12, and 15 volts at three amps. Or it can handle 20 volts at 3.25 amps. And once we do the discharge test, we'll go ahead and plug this in to see how it works. All right, well, this inner share battery is all charged up according to my 20 amp charger. Uh, and, it, and I set the... Uh, the discharge test up and it shows it at 13.4 volts, which is a little lower than I thought it would be, but I'm gonna go ahead and start it anyway. And I'm gonna do a 10 amp test. So that's a 0.1 C. And so this test will take about 10 hours to do. Okay, there we go. Perfect 10 amp test, as you can tell right there. And the voltage is 13.2. And so we're just gonna let this run for the next 10 hours or so. So I'll let you know the results when it's done. Okay, our test on the inner share of uh, 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery capacity is done. So let's go ahead and check out the results. All right, and as you can see, we have a total amp hour of 104.4 and we have a total watt hour of 1295.33. All right, so this battery passed the capacity test. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge it back up to like 70 or 80%. And then we're going to do a, a max amperage withdrawal test. Okay, I've got the inner share battery all uh, charged back up. It's probably like at 70 or 80 percent, something like that. I let it charge for about four hours at 20 amps. And I've got it all set up, as you can see, for my uh, max amperage withdrawal test. I'm going to first do like a 100 amp withdrawal. And then I'm going I'm to push it to see how far it'll go before the battery shuts down or it doesn't. Uh, but the first thing I want to show you is what it comes with. It's this little DC controller box. And let me show you how to hook it in. It's super easy and it's pretty convenient. Okay, now here's the, here's the little top of the, of the battery right here. And this little cap goes on there to keep it waterproof. So you just take that off. And then this little, this, uh, this aviator plug, it only goes in one way. And what you do is you just, you just snap it into place and it automatically, it automatically fits in and it won't come out. Like you can't just pull it out. You have to twist this and then pull it out like that so and you just pop that in and now you have some usb ports 
And so like this tablet right here, we'll go ahead and just plug this right into the bottom here. And you can hear the tablet go ahead and charge right up. Like I said, this does charge, this will charge at, you know, 5, 9, 12, 15 uh, volts at 3 amps. So it'll, it'll charge whatever you need. So it's a very nice uh, quick feature in order to get uh, just some simple USB ports. We're going to go ahead and leave that plugged in while we do this test just to make sure that it keeps this thing uh, charging. So that would be a good example of how that works. Uh, and if it fails, we'll see right off the bat that this uh, tablet will stop charging. Okay, so the first test we're going to do is a 100 amp uh, constant test. Since it's a, it says it can uh, do a max discharge of 100 amps continuous. So we're going to go ahead and start up some, uh, some heaters. And, uh, and we're going to charge up our Blue Eddy on turbo. And maybe that will give us our, uh, our 100 amps. Let's go ahead and get our amp meter working. And so I think the first thing we should do is just go ahead and turn this heater on. And our amperage is right around, uh, it's right around 50 amps right now, but it'll, it'll drop down. All right, and now let's plug in the Blue Eddy, get it start to charge. And this should, this is, this should uh, get up to about 430 watts. Okay, so now our amperage is right at 80, 82. So let's go ahead and turn this heater on. This is a 200 watt heater. And you see that's bumping it up to 100. It's at 111 amps right now. And it'll drop back down, but it'll, it'll probably stay right around, right around 100. So let's just keep that for five minutes. Go ahead and start our timer. Okay, the amperage actually dropped down to about 80 amps with all this running. So I went ahead and introduced a, uh, a charger and it's charging this, uh, this watt cycle battery down here, this 200 amp hour watt cycle battery. And it's charging at third, no, it's charging right at 15 amps. So our amperage is now right at 102 amps. And it has been running for, you know, three, almost three and a half minutes now. Uh, so we're just gonna let it run for like seven or eight minutes. Okay, well we are heading right into eight minutes with all this running. It's still running 103 amps. Uh, if we look at the inverter, it shows right there that we're powering about 1200 watts. And we've been doing that, you know, for right around five minutes. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and take out this little 200 watt heater and we're gonna plug in that 1500 watt heater right there. And then we're also gonna boost this from 60% up to 100%. So it's gonna do like a, probably a 22 amp uh, charge to this battery down here. So let's go ahead and move that around and that really should double our amperage. So we should probably see around 200 amps coming out of this battery. Okay, so first thing, let's go ahead and move this up to 100%. So instead of 15 amps, we're jumping up to, now it looks like 19 amps is as high as it's gonna go. But then we're gonna turn this, uh, turn this on high. So let's see what our amperage is right now. Yeah, we took that heater out, so it's back down to 90. So our inverter says our wattage is right around 1,050, 1,060. So let's go ahead and kick this on high. Let's see what happens. Timer is right at 10 minutes. Our amperage is now at 244 amps. Yep, 245, 246. Our wattage is 2560. Oh, perfect. See, that is exactly how it's supposed to work right there. That was an over amperage event. Everything, everything just shut off. Inverters off. Uh, it stopped charging, so even the aviator plug uh, is turned off. Everything turned off because the battery had an over amperage event. Okay, and I went ahead and reset a timer. So it's now reset uh, because the battery is shut down. So what we're going to do is let this run until we'll see. I'm going to let it run for like 10 minutes 
and oh never mind look at that uh it looks like it took about 45 seconds altogether because i set this a little bit later but this is back to charging our inverter is turning back on things are charging back up and our amperage is is getting back up to you know 80 amps or something like that because everything is starting up except for that big heater over here all right that is perfect that's exactly the way it should work all right well the inner share battery passed the over amperage test which in my experience so far with the other batteries i have tested is rare usually they will get up to 200 300 amps and they'll just keep going they'll never shut down i'll finally have to end the test after a few minutes but this battery actually shut itself down so that is a huge plus in my book so far everything about this battery has passed with flying colors um the only thing that doesn't jive well with me right now is that this battery says that it has heating elements inside the battery to keep it warm during cold environments um, I believe it has cold temperature charging protection, which I think is kind of uh, almost like an oxymoron. If you have heating elements, then you wouldn't need that. But I would like to find out just to, just to make sure. Um, and also it has Bluetooth capability is what I've read, but I have no idea how to get the app. So I'm really hoping I can get a hold of that app and it will tell me more about the heating elements and, and everything else that's going on inside. Uh, until then, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and if I do get my hands on the uh, app that I can use to tell me more about what's going on with the heating elements and uh, the, the cold temperature charging, I will do a part two uh, to kind of finish this off. But for right now, this, uh, this battery is really performing over the expectations that I had. So. If you have any questions about the InnerShare 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, uh, please leave them in the comments. Um, I will leave a link to this battery in my description so you can look more into it if you'd like. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.